Hey, this is Jesse Canton. Man, I am so glad that you took the time to download this podcast. Listen, it's getting ready to be a blessing to you. It is power packed full of wisdom. Listen, as you hear this episode and you maybe you want to be a blessing to this podcast, well, you can hit me up on Cash App. Type in Jesse E. Canty, J-S-S-E, the letter E, C-A-N-T-Y, with the dollar sign, of course. And you can be a blessing. Anything you give will be appreciated. I thank you, and I pray that nothing but God blessings and his best be upon you. Take care. Hey, this is Jesse Kent with another episode of How Bad Do You Want It? Well, we're at the end of another year, and it's usually around this time that we hear a lot of New Year vernacular. You know, a lot of sayings that we're going to lose 50 pounds, or a lot of sayings that we say is we're going to be nicer people. And most of it, man, you know, we don't hold up to our end of the bargain. It happens every year with most of us. You know why? Because we go into a new year with the old mindset. But I got a way that I want to talk about on this episode that I guarantee that you will see a year like no other. If we allow this to take place in our life, you want to talk about it. Let listen here. I'm going to entitle this one, A New Encounter. Let's go. Yeah, man. Man of wisdom. From the pulpit to the podcast, from the pulpit to the podcast, to the podcast, yeah. Jesse Canty, pursuing my destiny, pursuing my destiny, yeah. Tell me, how bad do you want it? Hello, 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 hello. Welcome to another episode of How Bad Do You Want It? I'm your boy. Jesse E. Canty, this is, this is episode number 155, man, and I got a lot to say, and the Lord got even more to say, so let's get into this thing and pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, order my tongue, order my mind, that I only say that that what you want me to say, God, and that we all be edified by your spirit and your glory. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Listen here, man, this one is entitled, A New Encounter. I'm so grateful, again, that God have brought us through another year, 364 days today, one more day in this old year, this year's current year, and then we're going into a new year. And as I said, this is a time that we usually hear a lot of new year vernacular. And I'm not going to just point people, at, point fingers at people. We've all have done it before uh, that we, we make, you know, resolutions and I, I don't want to get off on all that stuff, but I'm not against new year's resolution. I'm not against trying to change. Listen here. I'm not going to ever get to a place where I say, you know what, bump it. I'm just going to keep doing me. No, that's what the enemy wants you to do. But but the problem is this, that we have to tweak and realize, uh, tweak our plans and realize why we keep continue to fail when we go into a new year with all of our expectations. We want to be a new person. We want to lose 50 pounds. We want to do this. We want to do that. We want to. And most of them to the positive. But then we get into the new year and we continue the same thing. As I pondered over what this last next to the last episode should be in this year, this is what flooded my heart. God took me to the scripture and I have to bring Moses to the platform and allow Moses to show you what we've been doing wrong at the end of a year, how to go into a new year the right way. And that's why I'm going to entitle this to the new encounter. Now, let me show you something here. Now, I'm going to talk to you really deeply on this one. Uh, if To say that Moses had some experience and all of this is inspired from Exodus chapter 33 and I think around about verse 8. 18, Moses said something that was so profound to God. Now, you got to understand that Moses had many different experiences with God. Now, hear this now. He had many different experiences with God, breathtaking experiences, mind blowing experiences. Moses by himself had more experiences with God than most any other person, most of any other person in the scripture, if you begin to break it down and look at it, Moses began to, Moses had experience with God at the burning bush. That alone was mind blowing. Moses had experience with God watching the 10 plagues unfold. That alone was mind blowing. Moses had experience with God at the dividing of the Red Sea. He saw a sea split right down the middle and not just split and divide, but even 
even the wet ground that the water was on became dry. And then God held the whole river, hold the, hold, held the whole wall up till his children got through it. And then he swallowed up the enemy. Moses saw that with his own eyes. He had a breathtaking experience with God. Moses had an experience with God on Mount Sinai. He saw a whole mountain shake and he saw the whole mountain on fire with the presence of God. Man, Moses had an experience with God at the tent of meeting. He saw the cloud, the Shekinah dwelling presence of God come down upon the Ark of the Covenant. He had breathtaking experiences with God. And yet what is most amazing to me about Exodus 33 is that Moses, after all of these life experiences that he had with God at Exodus 33, 18, God, he says something to God that blew my mind. After all of these experiences with God, Moses told God, show me your glory. Now, that may not make sense to you, but I'm going to do my best to make it make sense to you. If I just laid out all of these lifelong experiences that Moses had with God, let's break it down a little bit more. That means God, Moses saw God do all kinds of stuff in his life and for his, his people lives. And then Moses came to a place where Moses would open up his mouth to God and say, show me your glory. In other words, Moses wanted to see God more face to face. What would make Moses, uh, 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 you would think after he'd been with God uh, and seen God, all these things of God, that he can just put it back in neutral. Well, now listen to me. He can just put it back in neutral and just do church or just, you know, do what he see. He's already seen things done. He should have learned the things to do and what not to do by now. But Moses still had a hunger that caused him to want to see God in a greater manner that he said it. Now, listen, now he said it in a peculiar way. He didn't say, just give me more of you. He said, show me your glory. Watch this. What would make Moses ask God to show me your glory? And what do that have to do with us going into a new year? I'm glad you asked. In other words, what Moses asked God, Moses had experienced God, but he wanted more of him. Now, that's where we bring and we beg to differ with today's generation. I already know that when I do these podcasts and I mention about God a little too much, I'm going to lose some people. Because people want gold, but they don't want the one who created it. Everybody want to be developed and want to be blessed, but they don't want the blesser. Everybody or blessor, we, we, everybody wants to benefit and wants to have wonderful things. But there's very few people who really want to encounter a have an encounter with God. This is why we can never go into a new year and actually change if we don't put the main one who is life changing at his proper place. We are in a world now where we're trying to erase and fade God to the back and put man on the pedestal. How? But the Bible said, what does it profit a man if he gain the whole world and lose his soul? What are you saying? I'm saying that we cannot go into a new year. Listen to this. We cannot go into a new year longing for everything but God. I don't want to hear nothing about God. I want to hear you tell me how I can get finances. I want to hear you tell me how bad I want it and I can get everything else I want in life. But I do not really want to hear all that God talk. You lose people, Jesse, when you start talking about God. Well, if I don't talk about God, we already lost. That's the problem. We cannot go into another year, especially as this world is changing quickly and scripture is being fulfilled right before our eyes. People of God, please don't tune us out, including as myself, that we cannot go into 2022 with an old encounter. We cannot go into a new year with old religion. We must ask God to show us his glory. And I'm going to break that down. Down in more than a minute. But let me give you a little few places in the scripture here where scripture shows about those who long to see God. 
Psalms, most of this is written from Psalms, so that means David said it. My soul is crushed and longing after your ordinances at all times. Also, Psalms, Isaiah 26, 9 says, At night my soul longs for you. Indeed, my spirit within me seeks you diligently. For when the earth when, for when the earth experiences your judgments, the inhabitants of this world learn righteousness. Psalm 73, 25 says, Whom have I have, whom have I in heaven but you? And besides you I desire nothing on earth. Psalms 119.81 says, my soul languishes for your salvation. I wait for your word. Psalms 42 and 2 says, my soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? Psalms 63 and 1 says, oh God, you are my God. I shall seek you earnestly. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh yearns for you in a dry and weary land where there is no water. Even the psalmist would show us throughout the scripture that you cannot lose your thirst and your hunger for God. Moses, after seeing all of that that he saw of God, he still hungered for more of God. He wanted a new encounter with God and he said, show me your glory. If we are going to genuinely experience God in our life, then our appetite for his glory must increase and not decrease. But that's what's happening in this world. Most of us are decreasing. I will be lying to tell you I haven't felt the temptation in my life to get off course and put God to the back burner. But I thank God for the teaching that he keep putting in, he, that he that he instilled inside of us as an anchor. To remind us, do not decrease. You want God's presence to increase in your life. What does it mean when it says, what does experiencing God's glory mean? The word glory comes from the Hebrew word kabod or kabod. And it means abundance. In other words, when Moses is asking God to show him more of his glory, when Moses is saying it, Exodus 33 and 18, what he's really saying is he's asking God for an abundance or overflow of himself in Moses' life. I should have hit the bomb on that one, man. He's not asking for bigger houses and bigger cars. I'm not against material things until material things come between me and God. I'm going to say that again. I am not against no material things at all until the material things become between me and God. So what he's asking God for, he's asking God for an abundance or, or overflow of himself in Moses life. That was Moses saying, God, I want more of you in my life. Man, what a request. Moses was not setting when Moses was not settling for the things he had experienced in his past, but he was ready for a new and encounter, a new encounter of abundance, a new encounter of abundance of God in his life. So when he says, show me your glory, he was asking God for a new encounter. Now, you know, I am a man of definitions and I want to break down two of them for you right now. The word encounter mean I want to have a new experience with God. Encounter means more of experience, a new encounter. When I want to have a new experience with God, I mean, going over to 2022, I thank God for everything that he's going to do that I haven't even asked. I, my eyes haven't seen, my ears haven't heard, neither in my heart. And God going to, and I'm, I'm quoting that in this context here. God is going to tremendously bless us. I believe that. But at the end of the day, if I go into a new year and never demand or ask or request from God to give me a new experience of him. I want a new encounter with God. I want to see God on a, on a, in, a, in a manner that I never have before. The word encounter means experience. The word, now, I'm going to look up something else. How many, most, how many of us have ever taken the time to look up the word experience? Well, this time I did. Check this out. The word experience basically means this. You're asking God for new adventures. You're asking God for new involvement. You're asking God for a deeper observation or awareness or understanding of him. When Moses said, show me your glory, he was asking God for a new encounter with him. 
He was asking God, God, what you get ready to do in my life in this new year. I want to have a new adventure with you. I want to, I want you to walk me through a place that I ain't. And listen, I don't mean to speaking negative of me because you can go through some hell and high water and the, if that, you know what? But at the end of the day, if God is walking with me, then listen here, we ain't got to fear no valley of shadow of death, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But I want to see God give me some new adventures. I want to see God's environment in my life like never before. This is the thing, even with the podcast, God kept putting because I preached in pulpits for over 20 years and I still would do it now. I preached in pulpits around this world and over 31 countries for 20 years, 20 plus years, 25 years. But yet when I got on this stage, God began to show me that the same way I was with you then I'm with you now, but I'm going to give you a new experience. I'm going to allow you to have an involvement with me on a platform that you never experienced before. You will see me in a deeper manner, deeper observation of God, deeper awareness of God, deeper understanding of God. Now, how many people can fix your heart to say you want a new encounter with God in 2022? This is how you guarantee change in a new year. This is not only how you guarantee change, but I guarantee success because you can cannot lose with the God that you use. I'm telling you, I'm not telling you to, 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 to think you're going to be perfect. I'm not telling you to walk around here like you are uh, angel in heaven. I'm telling us to do what God's word said and just draw closer. See, we overcomplicate things and that's because, and I'm not against our holiness background because that is the boundaries that God have laid for us. And that is important. But sometimes we, we talk about holiness so much. We start to tend to think that if we ever step or mentally think of something we shouldn't think of, that we are failing God. And all we got to do is just have a heart and seek out the God, invite God to have be more involved in your life. Invite God to cause you to have a deeper observation of him. I want to be aware of God, not just in a church setting only. I want to get an understanding of him in different aspects, in different phases of my life. This is what Moses was saying after all of these experiences that he had. Think about it, man. After all of the experiences that Moses saw God on, he was he was he was well gifted at seeing God in different formats. And then he still got to a place where God will reveal himself and says, I pass by you and I put my hand over your face and then I remove my hand and I show you my back parts. And we know we understand what that means in the scripture, that one of the places that mean that we believe that Moses saw the past of God so he could write the Pentateuch. He could write about Genesis that he wasn't even created. He wasn't even born yet. He saw the past of God. Why would God even grant him this responsibility and this blessing to do it? Because Moses was not limited to what he knew of God in the past. He always had a desire for a new encounter with God. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Hey, thank you for taking the time to listen to this podcast. God has blessed us to have listeners all around the world. And I thought to myself, I said, maybe there's somebody that wants you to have a prayer request. I want you to pray with them concerning anything, your family or whatever it is. If that's be so, listen, drop me an email at Jesse Canty podcast at Yahoo dot com. J-S-S-E-C-A-N-T-Y podcast at Yahoo dot com. I would love to hear from you. I love to pray with you. And I want you to have a blessed day. I don't want to just keep dupe. This is this is the negative about religion. This is the negative about the de- denominations. Uh, we we pitch a flag, we build a fence, we build a house, and say we're Pentecostal, and we build up a house and we say we're Baptist, and we fail to continue to grow with God and see God in a deeper observation of Him. And I'm not talking this New Age stuff. I'm talking about. Allowing God to reveal to us his glory. Now, let's get deep into this thing. Encountering the glory of God is all about allowing God to give you the abundance of his presence. 
to experience this, man, John the Baptist said it best. He said that he must increase so that we may decrease. We, most of us don't want to hear that, <laughs> but I'm going to say it because it's true and it's not easy to do. But if we go into this new year thinking it's all about us, I'm telling you what's going to happen is in our lives, God is going to decrease because we decreased him. You say, how can you decrease God in your life by not drawing nigh to him? He said, you draw nigh to me and I draw nigh to you. We have to get to a place that John the Baptist will say that God must increase and that we may decrease. How many of us, that's where going to church, that's what watch night service, these are the things that should be mindful of us, but we know we don't wait till December 31st to do that. We have to start preparing our mind, and even after December 31st, we, 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 not just you, we have to continue to ask God throughout this new year, Lord, I want you to bring out a new me. And I'm not talking about in the way that the world is talking. The world won't change without, without, uh, without going to the one that can change everything. I want more of God in me, more of his abundance presence to flow through my life. Allow me to have such a new encounter with you, God, that when they see Jesse in the new year and from now, that they'll see more of you. The, even the little parts of me that have become who I am, if they are against or even grieving your spirit, I pray that God even mature me in an area where I will not even put him in a position where he may not look or that he will that he won't receive the glory that's due unto him. The glory of God is something that you have to make room for in your life. Whatever space you create for God in your life, God's glory will fill it. So when you're saying that we want to have an encounter with God or how to encounter God's glory, how do you do it? You need to be, we have to begin to be mindful of John 1 14 and the scripture says, and the word became flesh and dwelt amongst us. And we saw his glory, glory as of the only begotten from the father, full of grace and truth. Now you break that thing down slowly. It's a mouthful. In other words, we take the word of God and by us wanting to have a new encounter with God, show us more of your abundance presence in our life. Not just we have heard, show me your glory and articulates it to show me bigger things. Give me a bigger house. Give me, take me in all this other stuff that's materialistic. That was Moses didn't have no Cadillacs. Moses wasn't asking for no brand new uh, uh, oxen with dubs, <laughs> new shoes on. <laughs> Moses was, was focused on the presence of God. And he understood, even though John chapter one is in the New Testament, he understood that, listen, if I'm going to be living and if I'm going to be here and, and, and of God, then the word must become flesh. How can the word become flesh? That means the word of God, which is the will of God, must actually begin to come alive in flesh. So let me become what your word expresses. And that's a big task. And that's a big request from God because ain't none of us is perfect. But I'm telling you, when we rely upon God, he perfects us. Help me, God, to manifest your word in the flesh. And when we start to carry out the will of God, that's the word becoming flesh. When we as his people start to carry out the will of God in our everyday life, people will begin to see the word through the flesh. Excuse me. People will begin to see the word inside of the flesh. Now, I know flesh is a taboo word in this church. I'm not using it in that terminology right now. I'm using the terminology, John chapter one, verse 14, and the word became flesh. Now we know this was speaking about Christ. Christ is the word. And all of a sudden, boom, he became manifested in body and the word became, and he dwelt amongst us, etc. But not just like that, only the same thing that Christ did, we can do. The word of God must be visible in our life. Get what I'm saying. Don't misquote anything I'm saying and take it down a, a, a road that is not meant to be. The word became flesh and he dwelled amongst us. When we begin to walk out the will of God in our everyday life, the presence of God 
That's the encounter right there. The presence of God will dwell amongst us. And guess what else? And the Bible says, and people begin to see his glory. The glory as the only begotten of the father. Do you not remember (laughs) what I just said that Moses said, show me your glory. And how do you want God? How will God show you his glory? By looking, by searching for somebody who will live their life through the word of God, that others can see it. The word become flesh. And when they see God in you, the glory of God is manifested upon you. And your life must be full of grace and truth. Jesus answered and said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. We take in the word, which is Christ, bringing it into our everyday life, making it become flesh. Others seeing him in his glory inside of us. All of a sudden, God will use our lives to draw people to God because Jesus said he is the way, truth and the life. No one can come to him except through Christ. The Lord cannot feel what has not been emptied. When we come to a place in our hearts and say, Jesus, I need more of you. The measure I have just isn't enough. I need an overflow. I need an abundance of your glory. And I'm telling you, when we have that mindset, then things begin to change. Moses said to the Lord, please show me your glory. Can we do the same thing going into this new year? There is a new encounter. Hear me the last two minutes. The Lord desires to have a new relationship with us. And because of that new relationship, and I ain't just saying repeat after me and not give your life to Jesus. I'm talking about deeper than that because sometimes we can even let that structure become something that stagnates our relationship with God because we have already got it stepped out and planned out. All God needs is a person that is desiring him much as he is desiring you. And what happens is God will come along and I want the Lord and I really believe this. I haven't reached this yet myself, but I'm going into this new year with everything, all the baggage, all the stuff and all the weight. I want the Lord to give me a new encounter with him. I don't care about impressing people and you shouldn't either because I'm telling you, if you don't understand that this world is quickly on its way to what the word of God said it would be in the last days and you ain't seen nothing yet, it's going to take some people who have had a deeper experience with God. If God want to show himself visible to this generation and he looking for some people to use, will you not lift up your hands and say, Lord, here am I. You can use me. I thank God for what he done in 2021. I thank God for all of his mercies that's upon me. I thank God for how he forgave me. I thank God for how he blessed me. I thank God for how he restored. I thank God for all of the wonderful things he done for my family and I that I didn't even see him do, but I know he did. But I believe right now, and I'm requesting asking God to do something so special that's going to give me a deeper observation of him, a deeper awareness of his presence. Be with me on different stages, wherever you want to use me, God. I don't want to just be a cookie cutter and fit for one place. And that's the way I used to experience God. And that's the way I know God. I want to know God beyond my normal realm. I want to know God beyond what's, what's, what's uh, comfortable. There we go. I want to know God beyond what's comfortable to me. Oh, man, that's powerful. And I pray right now that the spirit of God leads your life the same way. I pray that you feel his presence, that you hear his voice even now. May this new year I speak over your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Be a year that's God pleasing. 
I'm talking about from, from January 1st to December 31 and rolling over in two, that it will continue to flow. Let the Spirit of God, no matter what's going on in this world, may the Spirit of God keep you and guide you. May the Spirit of God begin to reveal himself in a greater manner to you. We decree these things to be so right now in Jesus' mighty name. Know that I love you. I pray that it's blessed you. Hey, business owners, this is Rashad Brown with Swipe Fast, located in Columbia, South Carolina. We are excited to be partnering with Jesse E. Canty in the How Bad Do You Want It podcast. Since 2017, Swipe Fast has been helping business owners like you save up to 99% in their debit and credit card processing fees. So if you process business to business or business to consumer payments, we have solutions that will meet your needs and would love to hear from you. You can reach us at swipefast.com forward slash save. That's swipe, spelled with the Y, or contact us at 1-800-597-0713. Don't forget to let us know that Jesse E. Canty sent you. Have a blessed day.